In this video, we're going to show some of the hidden depths of Affinity Photo 2, which is the latest version of this amazingly powerful Photoshop rival. And we've made this composite landscape image to show off some of its key new features. Affinity Photo has built up a huge reputation as an Adobe Photoshop alternative that offers professional photo editing features, but without a subscription. It's one of a trio of professional design tools. The others are Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher that can be used individually, but also dovetail seamlessly to provide a complete creative solution for photographers, designers, illustrators, and artists. The whole suite has been released in version two with some major new features and upgrades. We'll go through some of the key new features in Affinity Photo 2 now. It's a very quick tour, but it will give you an idea of just what this program can achieve. Now, looking at the sample image we created, you might be looking at the Affinity Photo interface and all these technical looking layers and wondering if maybe you've bitten off a bit more than you can chew. It's true that this is a professional program that inevitably introduces some unfamiliar jargon here and there, but you can just use the tools you need to start with and only experiment with the more advanced options when you're ready. Our image is basically a composite of a landscape and a dramatic sky with additional layers for masking and effects. Really, it's only complicated because we want to show off a lot of features. As with any sophisticated software application, or any camera for that matter, you can just start with what you need and work outwards from that. For photography, you'll probably spend most time in the layers and adjustment panel, and many of the other tools you need will be accessed from there. Affinity Photo also has personas. Most jobs are done in the main photo persona. The Liquify persona is probably going to be most useful to designers and professional retouchers. The Develop persona is where you process raw files and the Tone Mapping persona is for HDR merging and effects. The Export persona is for outputting processed versions of your images. One more thing, if you open a JPEG or a TIFF image in Affinity Photo, it will open straight into the Photo persona. If you open a RAW file, it will open in the Develop persona first, and you must develop it before it can be edited. So that's just a quick orientation for Affinity Photo to help explain a couple of differences in the way it works. These will soon become second nature. What's really exciting is what Affinity Photo can do, and especially the new tools and features in Affinity Photo 2. So let's take a look. We can show this with our sample image. If we go through and disable all these different layers and masks in our finished image, we're left just with the original photo, which you can probably see from the layer name is a raw file. Normally, once we've processed a raw file in the developer persona, there's no going back. The changes are baked in. But in Affinity Photo 2, when we first open our raw file in the develop module, we have a new way of saving our changes via this output drop down menu. If we choose the raw layer embedded option, the settings we've chosen remain live, so that if we double click this layer later on, the raw image opens up in the develop persona with all our previous settings still there, ready to be changed or altered if we need to. Now let's take a look at the new live mask layers. With Affinity Photo 2, you can create live masks with no need for any manual selections. These can include luminosity range masking based on brightness values, hue range masking based on colors, and band pass masking based on outlines and contours. Being live masks, you can adjust the settings at any time in the future. For this image, we've created a hue range live mask for our landscape shot. By picking the blue sky tones to make the hue range mask, we can replace the existing blue sky with a new stormy sky on the layer below, and without having to create any tricky selections. This mask is based simply on the blue of the sky. Now you may have noticed that our hue range live mask isn't applied directly to our image layer, but it's part of a little group called a compound mask. This is another new feature in Affinity Photo 2, which lets you combine the effect of two separate masks without permanently blending them together. 
In this case, we wanted to use a gradient mask to blend in that sky more subtly from the horizon upwards. By combining these two mask types, we've got a nice graduated blend for the new sky without masking out any of the old wheelhouse. You'll have noticed by now that much of the work in Affinity Photo is carried out using layers and masks. We've added a whole series of adjustments to our image, which you can see in the Layers panel. Layers are at the heart of Affinity Photo's non-destructive editing process, enabling you to keep going back and making changes as you work. They also allow a new feature in Affinity Photo too, called Layer States. When you're working on photos, you can often end up with a number of different layers for adjustments, live filters, image layers, and more. Affinity Photo now offers layer states where you can choose which layers are visible with the click of a button. This is great for creating and comparing multiple different versions of an image within the same image file. Here's a simple example. As an experiment, we made a gradient map layer for our image to give it a colder tone and we've created two layer states so that we can quickly compare it with and without this effect. It's not just for before and after comparisons though. With layer states, you can effectively save multiple versions of the same image. For example, black and white or color, with or without a replacement sky, and within the same image file. Okay, so now for another new feature. Affinity Photo already had a very clever mesh warp filter, but now this is available as a live layer. With Mesh Warp, you can distort or correct different areas within a picture quickly and more easily than traditional liquify tools. And now that this is available as a live layer, you can go back and make changes to your warp settings without backtracking or losing your other adjustments. Lastly, while we can take the credit for the main landscape photo in this shot, the sky image came from the free stock site Pixabay. Adobe users may already know about Adobe Stock and its free and paid for stock image content. Affinity Photo has its own system, powered by free stock sites Pixabay and Pexels. And with the stock panel, it's super easy to add stock content like skies, people and other objects to your photos. You just drag and drop to add images as a new layer. These images are free to use, but always make sure you give the photographer and the site a credit when publishing your finished image. This dramatic sky is by Felix Mittermeier on Pixabay. You can search for images directly in the stock panel and drag them onto your photos as new layers. Or in Affinity Photo 2, you can open them as new images just by dragging and dropping them onto the workspace. So there we are. That's just a quick tour of Affinity Photo, some of the new features in Affinity Photo 2 and some of the things that this remarkable program can achieve. For more on Affinity Photo, go to affinity.serif.com. Thanks for watching.